Hey guys, welcome back to the channel and welcome to all my new followers. This week we have a pretty cool episode because we're going to discuss the Lucas BNB restaurant neon sign and sort of, um, you know, spotting if an opportunity for a really cool photo and really working that one subject. So as um, film photographers, what we often do is we'll just, you know, hop in the car. We're a little bored. We go out there, we drive around, we see if there's an opportunity for a photo to be taken. Um, and especially as film photographers, we're drawn to, it seems more drawn to vintage things, things that um, were of days gone by, definitely me at least. And um, on one of those trips, we spotted this Lucas B&B restaurant sign. Um, so I immediately, of course, I jumped out of the car, I, well, I parked and then I jumped out of the car and I took a picture, but of course it being a neon sign, um, I wanted to come back wh when the lights were on and really work that subject, which is what I did last Tuesday. And, um, last Tuesday, the conditions were perfect, at least perfect in the sky. That's what I wanted. I didn't want to have a bland sky with no texture in there, nothing happening in it. Sky is everything when it comes to um, photos like this. And also kind of wanted to isolate the sign on its own because, I, yeah, it being so vintage, um, I didn't want to have any sort of distracting elements of a more modern era in the background, sort of giving away that it's not that time anymore. Now, I shot the sign on FP4, my favorite film. And why on black and white? I think it does that era really nice. Now, it, it does that era a lot of justice. So uh, that's why I shot it on black and white. And um, of course, I did a little bit of research on the sign. Apparently it was, um, yeah, the restaurant itself was built in the 1950s. You can see what it used to look like on this uh, really cool postcard that I found online. Because, of course, I did a little bit of research. It was built by a fellow called Phaeton P. Lucas, who was an, a Greek immigrant. And uh, he literally came here with a couple of <laughs> pennies in his pocket and became incredibly successful. The, you know, quintessential American immigrant successful, you know, success story. Um, but anyway, he uh, started um, uh, in the restaurant business at some point, And in the 1950s, he built this restaurant and this really, really cool neon sign. Now in 89, the restaurant closed. I have no idea why I tried to look it up, but um, there's not much information out there. Anyway, for some reason, the sign stayed there, um, probably because of cultural heritage. And, you know, the city of Dallas did um, recognize that at least. But the cool thing about it is that, um, yeah, the sign remained and um, given us, um, yeah, um, Generation X people <laughs> a taste of um, that era. Now, um, of course, we drove over there last Tuesday, me and my girlfriend, and I um, already had my um, idea of what I wanted to do. So um, when we arrived, um, I went out there and um, I wanted to take a few photos initially with um, an orange filter um, to see uh, what sort of effect that would give. I had sort of three setups in mind, uh, one with the orange filter, one without, and then one as the light really dropped to get the lights of the um, neon sign out. I couldn't think of a better format to shoot this scene than 35 millimeter. And so um, arriving there was really, really cool. Um, thankfully, the neon sign itself was hooked up to the um, um, regular net, the, um, you know, the electrical net. So it came on with the lights, which are um, uh, controlled by a light sensor. That was really cool. We didn't have to wait on some sort of timer that came on at 8 p.m. The light came on uh, pretty um um, soon, which was uh, really cool. And then so then I started working the subject. One of the great aspects of 35 millimeter is that you can really work a subject and take several different um, compositions or metering um, um, values um, with relative financial impunity because, uh, you know, you're not shooting with medium format or sheet film that's super expensive. So um, you can just shoot away, as you see here, I have, you know, a few negatives. I really love doing that because you can learn a lot from that. 
And I think that's where 35 millimeter really shines. Um, I also think quite often 35 millimeter is frowned upon. Um, but honestly, if you scan it in with a sharp scanner, you use really good lenses and you really take careful exposure, you can blow it up to 20 by 30. And those are just amazing prints. But anyway, the sign, it, it was awesome. Um, yeah, really to kind of stand there and, you know, really to work that subject and wait for the light to really get right. And um, the cool thing about a sign like this, of course, it has two sides. And so um, I worked both sides and I ended up with, yeah, a photo of each um, sort of exposure that I was really, really happy with. And um, yeah, of course, you know, as soon as I took those, I knew I had um, the shots that I really did want. Metering wise, I mean, first, yeah, I took them with all the photos with um, my um, F100. And as you see, um, there's an uh, AI, you know, AI lens on there, the 50, the Nikon 51.8 AI. Why that lens? It is super sharp. Why not a D lens? Um, I like the character on black and white of these, you know, dead era lenses. And plus, we still have um, really great center weighted metering on the F100. And uh, spot metering, you know, we still retain spot metering, which that is really great. Now, for the first two photos, I just did center weighted. But for the last photo, the third photo that we're going to discuss um, at the end of it, um, I used spot metering. I really kind of pinpointed what I wanted the camera to see as middle gray, which that is really cool. And then you can still play around with it a little bit. And that is really, I think, again, the strength of 35 millimeter, where you can really work that subject. You have that um, bandwidth to really work that subject because it's, you know, it's not that expensive compared to um, medium format or even, you know, large format. Um, does that necessarily mean that you don't care about exposure? No, not at all. That, I don't believe in that at all. I still slow down. I still really think about what it is that I want. But it's cool to have several different exposures to compare and to learn from, hey, this is what I really like. You know, this is how I want it to be. Now, as soon as I came home, I developed a role <laughs> in um, Ilford DDX. I did push it one stop because developing FP4 in Ilford DDX, you get such sharp images. There's almost no grain. Therefore, I mean, you can blow it up as big as you want to almost. Um, so I wanted a little bit more texture. As a matter of fact, I kind of wanted DDX to look like rod and all. But anyway, I added um, and, you know, I pushed it a stop and um, in DDX and um, yeah, they came out great. So yeah, guys, uh, these are the three exposures that um, I come up with. I have my iPad here. I'm just going to um, look at them as uh, as we go. Yeah, the first exposure, um, I took it um, with the um, filter and uh, the orange filter, a Coke and P or Coca P. And I took it, um, I like that filter. There's almost no de degradation, even though it's a plastic. There really isn't any visible degradation. If anything, it kind of adds a little bit more grit, you know, a little bit more texture in the photos. I love it. And you can see the sky is beautifully darkened, but here the lights aren't quite on enough for me just yet. Uh, the second exposure here, guys, I like it too. Um, 
Here I uh, removed the um, orange filter, and um, but I kind of waited for the earth shadow to appear. And um, so at the bottom, we had a little bit more texture. At this point, bummer, um, we started to uh, see, um, at least from this angle, we, I started to see the, the clouds dissipate. So uh, that was a little bit of a bummer, but um, I still love the photo. But the, um, the third shot, guys, I think it, it really um, is uh, why it came out there. Um, the lights are nice. Um, and this is, by the way, obviously you can see it, it's on the other side um, of the um, um, sign where um, the sun set. And um, this is definitely um, going to get printed. Uh, this is my personal favorite. You might like a different one. But again, I have three... Um, exposures that I'm really happy with, three compositions that I can print and that I can choose from. Because another thing that I've noticed is sometimes, um, you know, years later, I'll look at a photo and all of a sudden I won't like it anymore, but I'll like an, a different photo for some reason. So that's why it's nice to have a couple of different exposures, a couple of different compositions and um, to choose from in the future, if you will. <laughs> but um, it was a lot of fun uh, shooting this sign. It was, um, yeah, just really going out there for the one subject is fun versus the, you know, just driving around and sort of running and gunning. But um, guys, this, uh, yeah, this was a lot of fun. Um, I hope you liked the photos. Let me know in the comments what you think about it, guys. And um, yeah, guys, as always, ask me any question. I'll definitely get back to you and um, love you guys. See you in the next episode.